morning, good morning, good morning. God bless you. God bless you. Ah, yeah. Good morning, good morning, kingdom people. Yes, Lord. Ah, Jesus. Good morning, good morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. All right. God bless you. Welcome to our callers. Welcome, Dr. Joy. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, family. Come on, y'all. Greet one another. Let's love on one another this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say hello to somebody else you see online this morning. Let's say hello to one another today. Good morning, good morning, good morning to all of our callers who are on the line. Good morning to Mother Overseer, Mother Maud Moore. Good morning to the Gore, um, my, my chief administrator, Tink Tink. Good morning to you all. Good morning to everyone who's on the line this morning. Everybody greet somebody else. Amen. If you see somebody else's name you hadn't spoken to in a while, say hi to them. Amen. Come on, greet somebody. Greet someone today. All right. We're getting ready to flow in just a minute. Hallelujah. All right, there's the notifications. Let's get ready to share. Hallelujah. 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 All right. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Say hello to someone. Miss Willie May, God bless you, ma'am. All right, all right. I'll call you in a little bit. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's share one with another. Let's 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 share one with another. Hallelujah. All right, we're getting our shares in and we're going to um, get ready to uh, get into some word today. And uh, hallelujah. Greet someone. If you're online, say hello to someone else. You see another name out there. Speak to someone. Call another name at the moment. Not, not Apostle Morris. I, I love y'all, but don't call my name. Call somebody else's name. Type it in the comments. Say hello to somebody else. Hey, Pat Ziegler. How you doing? Love you, daughter. All right. Say hello to someone else. Just greet someone else. I call us on the line. You can unmute this morning and just say hello. Say hello to somebody today. Amen. We need one another. We need one another in this season. Just say good morning. Greet someone you haven't greeted. Type their name. If you can't shake their hand, you can take time to type their name. Greet somebody. Good morning to my daughter, Overseer Deborah Harris. Kiss Big Curtis for me, okay? Hi, Tan. Good morning to everyone. Listen, greet somebody else. Rodney Poe. Hey, Cousin Benny. How you doing? Al Bean. God bless you, cousin. Amen. Listen, let's greet someone else. Greet someone else. Let love on somebody else. Say good morning to someone else. Amen. Say good morning to someone else. Amen. Greet, greet somebody else. Share the broadcast. Say good morning. It's okay. Listen, let's, let's have us a moment of cyber fellowship. Good morning, Dr. Murphy. Say hello to someone this morning. I know we're going to get into some study in just a minute. Um, listen, this is not going to be a big day of worship. I'm going to do some teaching and instruction today because we're at a pivotal time. Uh, Mother Mom, Dr. Murphy online. God bless you. <laughs> I know you don't see the Facebook side. Listen, let's, let's, let's say good morning to someone. Greet someone. Love on someone this morning. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need community today. I need community today. I need some renewing and some refreshing today. Amen. All right. All right. All right. All right. Love on somebody today. Listen, I so appreciate you for taking time to be with us this morning. Amen. I really, 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 really do. I really, 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 really do uh, appreciate you being online this morning. Listen, this is not going to be um, an ordinary worship service. Um, you know that, um, you know, I just try to follow the Holy Spirit. Uh, good. Hey, God bless you. Yeah, Delonte's on too. Good, good morning, Tay. Uh, man, we're still praying for you, brother. I'm still praying for you, brother. Amen. Listen. Amen. Benny, that's, that's sweet, Benny. Golly, man, I'll tell you something else. Always been one of my favorites. Amen. Amber James, God bless you. Listen, I want to get into some word this morning. And listen, I need you to hang with me as long as you can this morning. I'm going to do, listen, I'm going to do a, 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 a variety of teaching, but I want to, I want to get us to a place today and help us understand where we are in this time and in this season. Uh, we're going to talk about the feasts for a minute. Um, but I, I want you to know this is the beginning of a new year. 
a new year on the Jewish calendar, and I say sh a Shana Toba to you. Shana Toba. Um, I want to say um, um, Happy New Year to you. I know that sounds odd right now, uh, but again, we're moving by the Jewish calendar versus the Gregorian calendar. Greet somebody. Continue to say hello. Please, I want every person on this line to greet someone else. Now, I'm saying this for a reason. I'm saying this for a reason. Greet someone, not just a possible, but greet someone else. Love you, Bobby. I love all of you, but I want you to greet someone else. And I'm telling you right now, there's a reason for the Holy Spirit leading me to tell you this. In this next season, can I tell you this? We're going to need one another like never before. I'm telling you. And we've been talking about this season is coming up. And you know me, I'm not a prophet of doom. Um, I believe in the grace of God that you can have everything and nothing in the same space. Here it is. Grace is I can have everything and nothing in the same space. In other words, no matter what my physical circumstance looks like, I know I've got the grace of God covering me. So it does not matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what. So here, here, here I'm going I'm to do some teaching. My God, I'm about to burst already. Listen. Listen, I'm going to do some teaching this morning. I'm going to do some teaching this morning. Uh, Charlotte Binion, good to see you. Praise God for you and your family. Listen, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I wanna, to I wanna help you understand this. By the grace of God, in this next year, we're going to need to understand that we can have everything and nothing in the same space. Man, Logan, God bless you, bro. Good to see you, man, Ryan. Um, man, been a long, been years since we've seen each other, brother. Listen, but in this space, we're going to have grace. We're going to have, we're going to have, watch this. We're going to have everything and nothing in the same space. And what you got to do is we got to get our mindset right and our perspectives right. Because watch this, the challenges that are coming, the crisis that are coming, watch this, are going to be based on the preparation of last year. I was with some ecclesiastical leaders yesterday and we were sharing, listen, we haven't seen all this coming. There's more coming. But can I tell you, because of who your God is, you're good. So let me give you this word of exhortation very, very quickly, and then I'm going to get into some direct teaching on this season. Let me tell you something the Lord said to me this morning, and I want to say it to you. I, I want to say it to you. Don't confuse my appearance. Watch, watch this. Don't know that. Don't confuse a losing appearance with a winning anointing. Let me say this for you then this season. Hear me clearly. I want to say it exactly like he said it. Do not confuse a losing appearance with a winning anointing. Somebody needs to post that to Facebook for me. Don't confuse a losing appearance with a winning anointing. Because what you've got to understand, what you've got to understand, watch this, is you win. No matter what the season, no matter how bad it looks, no matter how folks look at you, no matter how folks talk about you, you win. Do not confuse a losing appearance with a winning anointing. And I'm going to take you to some scripture in just a minute and get you through that. I, I get you, get you, get you through this. Um, ah, Jesus. Um, um, and, 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 and this is what I want to, I want to do real quick. I'm going to, I'm going to do some teaching on this season, but the prophetic release for today, and this is a time when you need to hear the mouth of your leader, hear the mouth of your leader. And I want to give you this very, very quickly, very, very quickly. I'm going to give you this very quickly. Do not confuse a losing, losing appearance with a winning anointing. Listen, it may look like, watch this. It's bad. It may be bad, but watch this. You've got an oil on your life that's going to cause you to triumph. And, I, and maybe I needed that just to lift my spirit today. But I'm saying to you, don't listen. Don't let the world trick you. It ain't in the stuff. It's not in the material. It's not in how much you have. It's in who has you. And Christ has got your back. Your father has you covered. No matter how difficult it looks right now, you win. And so I want to give you the scripture that came to mind. Because I got to show you this very, very quick and then I'm going to get into some direct teaching. And I'm telling you, today I'm going to call for a seed offering. I'm going to ask you to plant seed today. I don't normally do this. And I want those who may be speculative about seed sowing. This is a time when the Father says we need to plant seeds. This is a time when the Father says, by the Bible, that we need to do first fruit offerings. We do first fruit offerings. We need to sow right now. So I'm going to ask you to plant a seed of any size today. If you pay your tithe and your offering, you need to seed on top of that. You need to share. Watch this. Watch this. You got to understand this. No matter what it looks like, 
It's who's looking at you. Your father is watching over you. You're not hidden from his eye. You're not hidden from his sight. No matter how difficult it looks, he's got you. So don't confuse. Watch this. Don't confuse a losing appearance with a winning anointing. Come on, come on, come on. Y'all need to put that, y'all, listen, somebody post that. Do not confuse a losing appearance with a winning anointing. And I'm going to ask you for a minute just to look back for a minute. Because all the stuff you've been through when you thought you were losing, when the enemy thought he was winning, you came out on top. Think about it. It has all worked together for your good. Hallelujah. So we're at the head of a new year. Shana Tova, happy and blessed new year to you. And I want to help you understand that God is going to bless the kingdom and keep the remnant in the midst of all this chaos. Now, I want to point you to a scripture that looks like a loss. Ah, Jesus. I'm going to point you to a scripture that looks like a loss, but it was truly a win. Now, here's the context I'm going to use, and then I'm going to, I'm going to move on in to some teaching about this direct time and season. Watch this. Do not confuse a losing appearance with a winning anointing. Can I tell you this sometimes? In this season, you better prepare yourself to look bad and be good with it. You better prepare yourself to look bad and be good with it. You better prepare yourself for the world to look awful and the kingdom to be in glory. I've been teaching you from Habakkuk that the glory of the Lord shall be seen. The knowledge of the glory of the Lord shall be seen as well as the seeds cover the earth. The seeds cover the waters. Um, you got to understand this. No matter what happens, you're going to come out of this with the glory on you. Sickness, disease, attack. Family, no matter what, you're coming out on top. Listen, let me tell you this. I'm trying to reassure you today. Do not confuse a losing appearance with a winning anointing. You have grace for this space that you're in. Now, let me say this to you. I want to go to the book of Luke, Luke 23, 44 through 49. Moderation team, help me with that. Luke 23, 44 through 49. Luke 23, 44 through 49. Watch this. Come on. Luke 23, 44 through 49. Watch this. The Bible says, and this is the scripture, and, and I, I don't quite understand why the Holy Spirit wanted me to release this scripture. Then let me say this honestly. I'm trying to be obedient to the anointing. I don't know why he wanted me to release this scripture. Um, I get part of it, but I don't understand all of why he wants this scripture. But he gave me this scripture to release to you today. And you got to understand this. Watch this. Don't confuse a losing appearance with a winning anointing. Because when it looks like you're taking a loss, you're really winning. Watch this. Luke 23, 44 through 49. Luke 23, 44 through 49. Please like and share this broadcast. I believe this is a kingdom message that we've got to have for this season. And I got to get into this. Watch this. Luke 23, 44 through 49. Watch this. And it came to pass at about the sixth hour that there was, watch this, a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. From the sixth to the ninth hour, we're in pitch black. Now watch this. What you got to understand is the sixth to the ninth hour is like from nine to 12, nine to 12 in the middle of the day. It is dark in the middle of the day. It looks like a, a some type of eclipse is going on from the sixth to the ninth hour. If I have my Jewish timeline correct, I think it is like it is like nine to 12 in the daytime. I'll verify that for you. So it looks like the earth is in darkness. Watch this. And the sun was darkened and the veil of the temple was rent amidst. It was torn apart. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, now this is what is going to be your mandate for this next season. Father, into thy hands, I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. Watch this. Now, when the centurion saw that which was done, he glorified God, saying, certainly this was a righteous man. Mm. And all the people that came together to that site, beholding the things which were done, began to smoke their breast. 
they begin to smote their breasts. God bless you, Minister, Minister Glover. They begin to smote their breasts and return. And all his acquaintances and the women that followed him from Galilee stood afar off beholding these things. Can I tell you something? The crowd that's watching doesn't even know what's really taking place. The crowd that's standing off watching you, watch this, and they were a group of believers who followed Jesus. They're seeing what Jesus promised and prophesied. He said, he said, the son of man must be lifted up, and unless he be lifted up, then there is no salvation. He said, Father, it is not time to glorify your son. What you've got to understand in this next season, in this year of 2021, is it may look bad, but you got good over you. It may look terrible, but you've got a terribly awesome God over you. Watch this. You got to understand that for this season. They think that assembly is the key. No, it ain't. It's anointing. Can I tell you this? You can have a bunch of folk in the same place and God won't even be there. It's not about us being in the same place. It's about us, about us being in the same power, the anointing of God. Watch this. The Lord said to me this morning, don't confuse Ah, oh, Jesus, a losing appearance with a winning anointing. Now, what you got to understand is this looked bad. It was dark. It was the sixth and ninth hour. The sun had, re listen, the sun had refused to shine. It was darkened. The temple was falling apart. It looks like the destruction is going on. But watch this. We see Jesus crying aloud, and look at what he says, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Now, let me say this to you. The, the kingdom needs to die again. We need to experience another death. Our own, Jesus said it on this wise. He says, if any man will come after me, he must take up his cross and follow me. One translation says, and die daily, die daily. Our death is the life of Christ coming forth. John said it like this, oh, that I would decrease so that he might increase. So we got to understand in this season, watch this, in this 2021, in this year where, where it's going to get it's going to get worse before it gets better, our death is going to be the indication of life. He says, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said that, he gave up the ghosts. And I'm saying to you, I'm saying to you, listen, don't confuse a losing appearance with a winning anointing. The anointing of God is going to keep you through this season. The anointing on your life, the ministry that's coming out of you, the service that you're rendering through Christ is going to stand in this season. Watch this. You've got to hear what God is saying and move by what he says do. I'm telling you, the anointing is going to keep you. So that's my prophetic release that I wanted to give it to you. I wanted to share that with you and say to you, watch this. Don't let the, listen, everybody that's standing back watching, don't let them confuse what looks like you losing with the fact that you are anointed to win. Don't confuse a losing appearance with a winning anointing. Don't do it. And the church has got to not judge one another on that same basis. See, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, God, I'm mighty. And I don't, I don't, I, Listen, it's good to have stuff, but don't let stuff have you. It's good to have friends, but don't let friends have you. Don't, don't let things control you in your life. You've got to understand this. The glory of God is coming upon you. And there is no glory unless there's some suffering. There is no light absent darkness. See, what makes the light even more important is the fact that darkness has existed. Please type in Isaiah 60, verse 1 through 3. Isaiah 60, verse 1 through 3. When gross darkness covers the earth, that's when the kingdom shines the brightest. And so we got to understand this. Isaiah 60, 1 through 3. What we've got to understand as listen, it may be tough, it may be rough, it may appear ugly in this season, but we win. And you've got a glory on your life that's going to cause you to win. I feel like stopping right there, but I've got to handle a couple of things just to make sure we're, we're in the right place. I told you today that I was going to call for a seed, and I'm calling for a seed. If you follow me on Facebook, I put out a handle, and I put it out in our impact groups. If you'd like to have that information, go to my page, and you'll see it's on the cover of my Facebook page. For those of you who follow who follow me on Facebook, it's on my Facebook cover, and you'll find that this is a time. This is a new year. This is a new year. This is a time. Mm, 
Ah, Jesus. This, 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 this is the year, uh, and I say Shana Toba, Happy New Year and great blessing be upon you for this year. But watch this. In this year of Shana Toba, these are some biblically mandated times. Now, please hear me once again. I'm not here for your money. I'm not a prosperity preacher. I'm a guy who says, let's follow the mandates of Christ. Let's follow what God has done. And I want to say to you, there are going to be three opportunities for you to sow in this season. Watch this. Today is one of them as we celebrate the Jewish New Year. Actually, the Jewish New Year, um, um, uh, Rosh Hashanah, which means the head of the year or the beginning. Watch this. Um, it, it's a time when, when, when we come together as, as, as the kingdom and we celebrate a fresh start, okay? Now watch this. This sounds, sounds strange, but watch this. Vegetation and everything else is about to die and go into hibernation. Why is it going to go into hibernation? It's going to go into hibernation because it's renewing itself for a fresh start. So there are two times when the year resets itself, according to the Jewish calendar, the domain two is, is, is during this time, watch this, of September, October, and during the time of March, April. So you have Tishrei, which is the month that we're in, or Abib or Nisan that are both heads of years in the Jewish economy, okay? Now, God did reset that so that the main head of year is a beaver Nisan, but the traditional one is now in Tishrei, and the Orthodox Jew still follows this time. So we still honor it because of the, because of the first fruit and the main three festivals that are going to happen during this time. Watch this. There, there, are, there are three major festivals that are going to happen during this time. First one is the is Rosh Hashanah, which was yesterday and actually runs through this weekend. It's, it's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday based on where you are in the world, okay? Because this covers the entire world. Rosh Hashanah means the blowing of the trumpets. Please make a note of this. Le Leviticus 23, Leviticus 23, verses 23 through 25. Let's get to that context for a minute. Leviticus 23, verses 23 through 25, Okay. Leviticus 23, verse 23 through 25. So let's, let, let, let's hit that context real quick. Watch this. And, and once again, when I teach these things, I want you to understand we're not sending you back to the law. We're just showing you traditions that God has said that ought to be honored. And so we honor those things because God instituted them. So Rosh Hashanah is the head of a new year, 23 through 25. Let me read those into your context. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, watch this, speak to the children of Israel saying, watch this, in the seventh month, the first day of the month, uh, shall ye see a Shabbat, a memorial blowing of trumpets and a holy convocation. And ye shall do no servile work therein, but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. So what 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 when he says an offering made by fire, that, that usually is a meat offering, okay? That's what the scripture calls ceremony, a meat offering. So watch this. That means you need to make a sacrifice today. That's why I'm calling you today for a seed. I'm asking you to sow a sacrificial seed. It's listen. This is not a prosperity thing. This is not God's going to give you. I'm not promising you nothing. I'm saying to you, let's obey the law of God in this sense that we participate in his system of giving. Watch this. So he says, watch this. He says, watch this. He says, he says in the seventh month, that's this month, Tishrei, on the first day of the month. He says, I want you to, I want, you should have a Sabbath, a memorial blowing of trumpets. So you got to understand the sound of the season is about to change. And, and, and listen, one of the Jewish traditions, I wish I had my, my shofar with me. I hadn't blown it in so long and, and I'm not going to attempt to blow it right now because I have not formed my embouchure in so long to sound shofar. I haven't. Um, I, I may try by the end of the call to see if I can get any sound out of it. But the sound, the sound, the sound is, is, is a sound that shifts atmosphere. So watch this. The head of the year is about a shifting in your life. Now watch this. This time and season, things are about to shift. They're about to change for you. And I'm telling you in this year of 5781, the year of, of, of the anointed leadership, the year of a word from the mouth of God, we've got to tune in and we've got to get our ears tuned to hear in the spirit realm and discern. Watch this. He says there's going to be a blowing of the trumpets, a sound and a holy convocation, a gathering together of the people of God. And he says, watch this. He says, I want you to make an offering made by fire. So make a sacrifice today. Now, 
And whether you believe in sowing or not, that's on you. I'm going to teach you the system and I'm going to teach you God's way and I'm going to leave it at that. So you, you've got to decide today. Sow a sacrificial seed. You've got information on there on how to seed. Um, you can sow that in tithe and offering or there's an option in our, in our, in, in our system where you can uh, put feast offering. Just put feast on there. You can If you're going, if you're going to cash out, but put feast offering on there or feast seed or if you do it through the uh, texting IFAM to 77977, if you text our family to 77977, then you can choose the option of feast or celebration offering. There's an option for feast offering, and you can do that through your giving link that you receive. Now, enough of that. Enough of that. There are going to be three opportunities to give in the next month, in the next month, okay? And I want to give these to you, and I want to show them to you by Scripture. I'm not just asking you to do something. I want you to understand that these are times that God says he wants a sacrifice for you, from you. Watch this. So he says right here, we just saw it in Luke 23, verse 25, I want you to make an offering made by fire. So he says, I want an offering during this time. That's the first offering for Rosh Hashanah. Now, there is a second offering, okay? That's on the Day of Atonement or Yom Kippur. What is Yom Kippur about? Yom Kippur is a day set aside for everyone to fast and partake in a laying down of your life by choice, like Jesus laid his down by choice. Now, the Bible says that Jesus has become our first fruit offering. He's become the first fruit of them that slept. Let me get that. That's in the book of Corinthians. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just straight teaching today, and I just want you to just walk with me, okay? But I want you to go back and listen to this um, 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 because I want you to understand um, how, how, the, how the Old Testament and the New Testament tie together, how the Old Testament and the New Testament Tied together. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians 15. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 15. And I want to look at the context of 20 through 34. 20 to 34. So when we talk about first fruit and we talk about seeding and sowing, there is a spiritual mandate and concept and principle that you need to understand. Okay? Now, now by grace, you can give a first fruit offering anytime. You can give a first fruit offering anytime, but there are some particular times when the scripture says you need to sow. I just showed you one that's during the time of Shabbat. Now watch this. Now we're talking Yom Kabbalah, Yom, I'm the time of, I'm sorry, Rosh Hashanah. Shabbat means, means rest or, or Saturday, basically Saturday is Shabbat or the Sabbath, okay? Now, Yom Kippur is another time. Yom Kippur is about Jesus laying his life down for us as a first fruit offering. So when I teach first fruit, I want you to understand, I'm not trying to get anything out of you. I'm not trying to push you to the Old Testament. I want to show you how the principles line up. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, verses 20 through 34. 20 through 34. That's 2, 0 through 3, 4. Watch this. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection. So in other words, since, 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 since Adam sinned and we had to die death, Christ came and brought us, by, brought us back life as a quickening spirit. Watch this. So, so watch this in verse 22. For as in Adam all die, our whole nature is dead. We're born, born in sin and shaped in iniquity. We are dead. Again, put up 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, 20 through 34 for me. So we have our context correct. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, 20 through 34. So we make sure we have our context right. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. But watch this, Christ had to live first so that we might have to live. That's why he had. To, that's why Christ had to take on Jesus, the flesh, and let his flesh die so that he could live. This is the nature of Rosh Hashanah. It's about the blood. Watch this, the flesh has to die and the spirit has to arise. So watch this, watch this, verse 23. I mean, 22, Christ also shall be made alive. Now watch this in verse 23. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits. Afterward, that, that they that are Christ at his coming. So that means that just like he got up, 
we going to get up. So when we die in our natural, we're going to resurrect in our spirit, the first fruit being Christ, the blood being the sanctifying power. And so then we give first fruit offerings in, 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 in honor of us, of Christ getting up from, from death and us eventually getting up from death. So your first fruit offering is more than about your money. It's about you honoring a system. It's about you understanding how the principle works. Okay? So that so the first opportunity for giving in this season today is Rosh Hashanah. The next one is going to be Yom Kippur. That'll be actually next Sunday. It'll actually be next Sunday because we worship on Sunday. The day is actually Monday. Monday is actually, on Yom, is actually Yom Kippur, but I'm going to teach on it on next Sunday, and we'll be sowing seed on Monday and Sunday. Now, that seed is a seed that I want everybody to sow the same seed on. We're going to sow a $21 seed, specifically, not a hundred, not five hundred, not a dollar. Every person 20 and over, I want you to sow a $21 seed on next Sunday and Monday. $21. Now, if you, can't, if you can't skip fast food for a week and come up with $21, then you're in bad shape. $21 next Sunday. Just a flat $21 seed. That's a seed that everyone, everyone should be able to reach 20 and above. Now, why do I say that? Why do I say that? Because that is in honor of the, of the year coming up, 2021, and the blood covering for us in that year. So we're sowing now with the intent and in covenant with God that we're going to be covered through 2021 as a covenant sacrifice. We're going to lay down what is ours for his as he laid down his life for us. The blood is going to have us covered, all right, in the midst of all the chaos, all right? So, so, so that's the second opportunity to sow. Now, here's the third opportunity to sow, which is mandated, mandated by the Father, and that's during the Feast of Tabernacles, or, the, uh, or Sukkot. Watch this. So that means that we will sow again. It's three times in this season. And, I'm, and I promise you, I'm, I'm not here for your money. I'm not here. I promise you, that's not it at all. I'm just going to give you the system. And I want to watch. I want to show you how the system will work for you. And ever since we've been sowing first fruit and we've been following God's timeline, there has not been a day that I've been without. I promise you, it may have gotten low, but I had grace in every situation. And I'm just telling you, I know his system of giving, his system of seed sowing works. It works. It works. So then watch this. We're going to sow. Watch this, every person. Well, let, let's go to Exodus. Before I do that, before I go to Tabernacles, let me wrap up on Yom Kippur. Go to Exodus 30, Exodus 30, verses 1 through 15. Exodus 30, verses 1 through 15. Let's go there for a second. Let me, let me, I got to get my scriptural background. I, I want to make sure I do, do it the way it needs to be done. I want to make sure I teach you. I, I want you to know this, okay? I want you to know this. And, and you can come back to this broadcast and you can study it again. And, uh, and you'll see that, that listen, there, there, it's in the Word of God. Exodus 30. Exodus 30. Hallelujah. Exodus 30. And we're going to go 11 through 15, okay? Exodus 30, 11 through, through 15. That's our context. Woo, Jesus, I feel your anointing, God. Exodus 31 through 15. Listen, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Exodus 30, 1 through 15. When thou take the sum of the children of Israel after their number... Then shall ye give every man, watch this, a ransom for his soul unto the Lord. And, and when thou hast numbered them, that there be no plague among them, among the numbers them. This, this they shall give every one that passes among them that are numbered, half a shekel and a shekel of a sanctuary. A shekel is 20 geras, and half a shekel shall be an offering of the Lord. Every one that passes among them, Watch this, are numbered from 21, from 20 years old and above shall give an offering unto the Lord. The rich shall not give more and the poor shall not give less. And the half a shekel when they give an offering unto the Lord to make an atonement for your souls. Now watch this. We know that by grace, we know that by grace, we don't pay for our sin any longer. This is set, watch this, to atone for sin. But what I want you to see is the principle of unity in it. He said, bring everybody together. Don't let the rich man be above the poor. Don't let the poor man be below the rich. He said, give everybody a set amount to give for the group to be in accord, be on one accord. I'm asking every person that is impact, that is KAF, 
that, that, that walks with me to sow a $21 seed for us to be on accord for this next 365 days. $21 next Sunday and Monday. Remember, today is a free will offering of your will. You can sow whatever you want to sow. Okay, that's free will. Next week, we want to show specifically a $21 seed for the year 2021. $21 seed from Sunday and Monday. That's what we want to do so. So that's your second opportunity for increase. It's your second opportunity. It's a sacrifice, folks. And I'm just showing you, watch this, that we want that sacrificial spirit to be among us because what's coming is about to challenge us and we got to share all things common. So I'm saying bring us all to the same place. Bring us all to the same level. You're not greater than I and I'm not less than you. When everyone sows the same $21 seed, we're saying to God, we're all on one accord here. We're not looking to be richer than our neighbor, and we're not looking to abuse the poor. We want to bring everybody to a place to where they can sow in this offering. $21 is what you want to sow next Sunday and Monday. Now, the third opportunity, I'm talking about these opportunities to sow, is the Feast of Tabernacles. Let's go to Leviticus 23, 23. Verse 39 through 43. We saw it between the 15th and the 21st day of the seventh month. Now, this, once again, is an offering of any size you want to sow. So we go any size, 21, any size. Whatever you want to do. You can sow a dollar. You can sow $700. You can sow as you have been blessed. I'm not going to go to the context because I'm, I'm, my time is moving very fast. Luke, Luke, I'm, I'm sorry, not Luke. Leviticus 23, 39 through 43. 39 through 43. So um, so this is our seeding, our seeding cycle for the next month. As I said, three major feasts take place right now in this season. Um, 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 again, Rosh Hashanah, the resetting of the year, giving everybody a fresh start. Um, Yom Kippur, celebrating the blood sacrifice. Christ laying down his life for us and us laying down our lives for Christ. And then the Feast of Tabernacles. The Feast of Tabernacles is, is God, I got to go into it. Luke 23, 39 through 43. Luke 23, 39 through 43. Let me go ahead and deal with it. I'm, I was trying to get beyond it, but I got to go and teach it. I know this isn't a normal Sunday morning, but we got we to gotta deal with this for a minute. Okay. Leviticus, I'm sorry. Leviticus 23. Not Luke 23. Leviticus 23. It's the L words. <laughs> Leviticus 23. Hallelujah. Go to Leviticus 23, hallelujah, and we're going to go to verses 39 through 43, 39 through 43, and we're going to deal with, we're going to deal with the Feast of Tabernacles or the Feast of Booths. Now, this is a feast that deals with, watch this, provision, and listen, I got to show you type and shadow. When we talk about this provision, I, we, I make a note of this too, Acts 2, ah, Jesus, go to Acts, let me, let me give you a verse I want to I want to share this share this with us too. Ah, ah, Jesus, ah, Jesus, help me teach, Father, help me teach, Father. I want to share this with you because I want to show you how how it's so important that we in this season in this season we're coming back to a season. Watch this where there can't be any any big eyes and little U's. We got to share all things common. We got to be here for one another because watch this the world system. I'm telling you, it's going to start to feel more collapse. And we're going to have to get back to the day where Big Mom and them lived. I want to go to Acts. Let me give you this verse so I can give you this to. Acts 2, 42 through 47. Acts 2, 42 through 47. Acts 2, 42 through, 42 through 27. Okay, sorry, Apostle, do we sow Sunday and Monday or just one of those days? For just $21 over the two days. Just one $21 gift. I, we, we, we do it on Sunday because that's our day of worship, but Yom Kippur is actually on Monday. So if you want to sow it specifically on the day, you can sow it on Monday, but it's only one time. It's not $42. It's just $21, and the window of sowing is Sunday and Monday, okay? Got me. I, you got me, okay? So it's the window of sowing is Sunday and Monday because we celebrate on Sunday, and that's when we have our biggest, peop our biggest congregants together, and I want to share that. Yeah, yeah, one seed with two days. That's what we got. So watch this. Watch this. Bless you, Bishop. Watch this. So I'm, I'm comparing now. I want to show you we got to come to that place where, where we take care of one another again. We got to get back to Big Mama and them. Big Mama and them said, if I got the bread and you got the peanut butter, then we got a sandwich. Come on, somebody. Watch me. If I got the flour and you got a little oil, then we got some whole cake. 
Come on, talk to me, somebody. If I got the meal and you got the oil and a little butter, we got some cornbread. Because they knew how to come to the table and feed community. You got to hear me now. We're in, a, we're, in a, we're, in a, we're in a time where the church has become so individually and prosperity focused that we don't understand we got to have community. Watch this. If you're rich, if you're rich, then you need to be looking out for the poor. If you're poor, then you need to be serving. You need to be doing whatever. But God has systems in place even in every harvest time. Watch this. Can I tell you this? And I'm not going to get into it yet. But even when you harvest it in, in, in the old system, when you harvest it, they left the four corners of their fields unharvested. So when you harvest it, watch this, you got to see this. When you harvest it, you took out a cross. When you, if say, say for instance, you had a square field of harvest. You had a square field of harvest. Watch this. When you took your harvest, you took out a cross. You took the middle down the middle and you took a cross from left to right. And you left the four corners. You left the four corners. Watch this for the poor, mm. for the needy, for the widows, for the ones who didn't have. So let me say to all my rich folks out here, if you're not blessing somebody who's less than you, you can rest assured you're not mandating and meeting the mandate of kingdom. It's not just about me, my four, and no more. We got to get to this place because what's coming, what's coming is about to stress us to the point to where unless we learn how to share one another, share one with another, we're not going to see the glory like it's supposed to be. We got to understand it's going to get worse before it gets better. And the kingdom's got to rise up in the glory of God. And we got to understand this. Listen, listen, I'm, I'm going to say this. God, God had me I, since, since, and I, no, I can't say that. Let me let that ride. Let me let that ride. I got to let God be God. Let that ride. Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23. Ah, I want to look at Leviticus 23, verse 33 through 44. 33 through 44. Watch this. Watch this. Ah, he says, and I'm, I'm going to compare Leviticus 23 to Acts 2. Leviticus 23 says, 33 through 44, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of the seventh month. This, this is the month we're in, the month of Tishrei, the 15th day of Tishrei, the 15th day of the seventh month, shall the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. And we got to do something, Bishop Garrett, we got to get with Apostle, we got to have services those seven days. We got to get our online services set. We don't have it set yet, set yet but we got to get that set. I need to mandate that for us today. I'm giving a directive today. We got to have service during those seven days. One of us has to broadcast all seven days. That's a mandate from the Lord. Bishop, let's work that. So watch this. Watch this. He says, for seven days, look, on the eighth, on the first day, you shall call a holy convocation. That's when God calls his people together. He says, ye shall do no serve. I'll work therein. Seven days shall you offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. So for this, seven days, we're going to be given during that whole cycle. We're going to be given during that whole cycle. So what I'm saying to you is what I do, what I do during this time, watch this, is I ask God for an amount, I divide it by seven, and I give every day. It's not law. It's not law. It's just me honoring what God says. He, listen, give. That's going to be a time when we want to give. I try to give every day during that time. I try to sow some seed. If I say, watch this, that I'm going to give $50, I take that 50 and divide it by seven, and I sow that seed every day. I sow it every day. I sow it. If it's a hundred dollars, I divide it by seven and I sow it every day. Watch this. And and it's and it's and it's, and listen, I'm not being ritualistic, I'm not being religious. I'm saying this is what the Lord is saying. So he says, on the eighth day, there shall be a holy convocation unto you. So we come back together again. Watch this. Then it says, You shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. This is another time of giving. He says, This is this is what first fruit. And he says, These are the feasts of the Lord. And you shall proclaim them to be holy congregations to offer to, for an offering made by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering and a meat offering, a sacrifice and drink offerings, everything upon his day. Besides the Sabbath of the Lord and besides your gifts and besides all your vows and besides all your free will offerings, which ye give unto the Lord. Watch this. He says, also in the 15th day of the seventh month, ye shall gather in the fruits of the land. That's the first fruit. 
and ye shall keep the feast of the Lord for seven days, and on the first day shall be a Sabbath, on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. And ye shall take of you on the first day of the, of the boughs and the goodly trees and the branches and the palms and the boughs and the thick boughs, I guess that's pronounced boughs, and thick trees and the willows and the brook, and ye shall rejoice before the Lord. He says, I want you to celebrate giving to me during this Feast of Tabernacles. Watch this. Watch this. And he says, you shall celebrate and watch this. And it shall be a statute for you. Watch this. Forever in your generations. That's why I practice these seed sowing principles. He says, now if we're, if we're grafted upon the tree as Christians, we're a Judeo-Christian. We're grafted upon the tree, which was Israel. You do know that Jesus was Jewish. We do. We honor the Abrahamic covenant that in, in him, all, in, in him, all the, the inhabitants of the earth shall be blessed. We honor the Abrahamic covenant. So why not honor these covenants? Watch this. He says, he says, watch this. It shall be a statue forever in your generations and you shall celebrate in the seventh month. That's this month. It's the seventh month and the first month based on which head of the year you start from. If you start from Abib Nisan, it's the seventh month. If you start in traditional sense, it's the first month. But whichever month it is, it's the month of Tishrei. And watch this. Watch this. This is about the Lord's provision. Here it is. 42, and ye shall dwell in booths seven days. So what the Jew actually does during this time is they actually build a little Sukkot, a little hut outside their house with thicket on the top and walls, and they don't go live in their houses. They don't go sleep in their beds. They live in inconvenience to remind them of God's provision. They don't cook on their stoves. They Listen, everything they eat is natural from the earth during this time uncooked, unprepared. Why? Because they do it in memoriam to show them that God's provision is good and is not based on your own ability. He, he says, this is a time to remind that your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths. And when I brought them out of the land of Egypt, I am the Lord your God. And Moses declared unto the children of Israel, the feast of the Lord. He says, watch this. I want you to celebrate this feast of booths, which, which, which will happen. Watch this again in October, October the third, the third through the 11th, the third or the second, the evening of the second through the 11th. That'll be the seven day stretch. And that's a time, watch this, when the Lord says, I want you to remember that, that though I put them in the booths, I gave them, I made them depend on my grace. I didn't let them have solid homes to live in. I put them in huts. I made them deal in an uncomfortable situation to help them to know that I am the Lord, your God. But I can bring you out of your bondage and bring you into the, to, into, in, in, through a crisis time and then get you reestablished. So even if it feels unshaky, even if it feels shaky and unstable, watch this. Don't confuse a losing appearance with my winning anointing. Oh, God, don't confuse a losing appearance with my winning anointing. I'm going to win. You're going to win. It may look like you're losing now. And remember, I opened with this prophetic word. Don't confuse a losing appearance with a winning anointing. It may look bad for a minute, but you're coming up out of this. That's, these are the major feasts. So we got three opportunities to sow seed over these next few weeks into October. Today is one. You sow a seed of your choice. Then on next Sunday, during Yom Kippur, today is Rosh Hashanah, or from Friday to Sunday, Rosh Hashanah, the head of the new year. So sow a seed today. You got seeding information there. Seed into your local church. But whatever you do, get a seed in the ground. I started seeding yesterday, and I've been seeding ever since. Watch this. Then next Sunday, you sow a $21 seed, the seed that brings the rich down and the poor up. We all equalize. We sow $21 next Monday and Tuesday. I mean, Sunday and Monday, Sunday and Monday of next week. Go to my Facebook page and look at my covers and you'll see the information on my page. So go to my page and you can get it there. Okay. Or go to our group settings. And you can get it there. Watch this. And then, then the final time that we sow will be during the, during the week of the Feast of Booths or the Feast of Tabernacles, Sukkot. And that's when we'll be sowing. And we just sow and sow and sow and sow and sow to your satisfaction, whatever the Holy Spirit leads you to do. Okay? So now, 
We're at the head of this new year. I got to get out of this. We're at the head of this new year of 5781. If you have not been with me the last few weeks, you need to go back and review the last few broadcasts that say introducing 5781. I'm going to ask you, please go back and review them. I may try to download them and put them in a loop today and just play them throughout the day. Because what you need to understand is this is a year, people of God, when you need to get under an, an anointed voice that hears from God. Make sure, listen, this is not about your feelings in this season. You've got to have a word from the Lord to keep you in this season. We don't need good feelings because remember, it's going to get worse before it gets better. It's going to look like you're losing, but you're going to be winning. But all things, we're going to be working together for the good of God to them that love them out of the call according to his purpose. Thank you, Holy Spirit. As I mentioned the word, I cannot leave out Acts 2. Go to Acts 2. I told you I was going to talk comparative, comparative between Leviticus 23 and Acts 2. He says, I want you to come together, have a holy convocation. I want you to make offerings unto me. I want you to, but I want you to pull all the people together. It's going to be a time of harvest. Let me show you one of the greatest harvests in the history of mankind. This is a time when the Holy Spirit is poured out on the day of Pentecost. Watch this. And I want to say this, and I say this all the time. I want to be sure that you understand this. We got more out of Pentecost than tongues. That's the only gift we celebrate from Pentecost. We think that's the only thing that God gave us was the Holy Ghost that made us speak in tongues. It's bigger than that. It's not just a Holy Ghost that makes you speak in tongues. I want to ask you a question. Can your Holy Ghost make you feed your neighbor? Can your Holy Ghost make you love people of other ethnicities? Can your Holy Ghost make you share all things common? If all your Holy Ghost can do is call you the Shundo, then your Holy Ghost ain't really authentic. If the Holy Ghost can't take control of your wallet like he takes control of your tongue, are you really submitted to him? Okay, let me say it again. If the Holy Ghost has no influence or can't take control of your wallet, your giving, your sharing, your loving, your living, then you think he only wanted your tongue? You think he only wanted what you say from your mouth? Sure, your mouth is a manifester, but your heart and your mind got to agree too. Listen, listen. If your Holy Ghost can't make you love people that don't love you, what kind of Holy Ghost you got? It ought, it, ought, it ought to challenge you. It ought to make you do better. Ugh. Acts 2.42, and they continue, Acts 2, verse 42 through 47. Acts 2, 42 through 47, and I'm wrapping up for the day. Please forgive me for going so long, but hey, it's what we got to do today under the Holy Ghost. We better get used to being under the word a lot longer because we're going to need it to sustain us these days. We better get used to, to we better get used to taking a break Coming right back to the word again. As a matter of fact, I, I sense a day coming when I'm going to do a word marathon. Where we're going to be on every hour on the hour all day. Come on, living right is evidence. You got it, Bishop. You got it. You got to understand this. Luke 2, 42 through 47. And they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Steadfastly. That means they, they locked in on that thing steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers and fear, that's a holy reverence came upon every soul. Watch this. And wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Now, let me say this to you too. In this next season, as darkness continues to come, we're going to see more signs and wonders. I got a Facebook message the other day. Um, I think it was Apostle Clinton Bethea showed a message. There was this Hispanic lady the doctors had pronounced her baby dead. Now, listen, I haven't, I haven't sought to verify this, but I believe by the Spirit of God it's real. There was this Hispanic lady. She was laying with a dead baby in her chest. Oh, God. The doctors had pronounced this baby dead. They were giving the mama a few moments with the baby because now the baby's died. And, and what makes this so significant is my mother, my, my own mother had to go through this same thing. Her child died in the hospital. But if she had died, I would have never been born because my mother promised my father one child. And that's why I take this gospel so serious. I see it as in my mind and in my rationale that my sister gave her life so that I could preach this gospel. Now watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. 
the lady's laying there with the baby in her chest and the lady's just crying out to God. She's praying. Now, I don't know whether she's in tongues or not because she's speaking in Spanish or some other language I don't understand. It's not in English, but I'm surmising that she probably was in tongues or she was praying and she was seeking God and this lifeless baby is laying in her chest and then all of a sudden as she's praying, the baby says, Wah! and it cries out in the middle of a mama praying for a baby that is dead. And I'm saying to you, I'm saying to you that we're going to see more miracle signs and wonders in this season to validate to the remnant that God is still with us. He's going to show us. He's going to heal disease. He's going to heal sickness. And me and Apostle Dean were talking the other day. There's going to be a day coming when people are going to walk up and say, I got COVID and we're going to lay hands on them and they're going to be healed on the spot. They ain't going to go through no 14 days. They're going to be healed on spot from COVID and every other sickness and disease. The kingdom is arising. Kidney disease, all of it is going to be healed in Jesus' name. There were signs and the wonders done by the apostles. Verse 44, and they that believed were together. They were together and had all things common. And they sold their possessions of goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continuing daily on one accord in the temple. Watch this breaking bread from house to house. They did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. I'm telling you, this is a season of salvation. New souls are coming into the kingdom. People are being saved right now. And they ain't dancing across your altar. But God is still saving folks from the guttermost to the uttermost. Salvation is still coming. And so I say to you at the head of this year, this has been a, a lot of teaching today, but I want you to understand, we've got some opportunities to advance kingdom right now. And I'm telling you, as things get crazier, you need the anointing of God. You need an anointed word in your life. You need to have the word of God in your life. And we need to come together as one. We need to come together as one. If you got meal, I got oil, we got a meal. We got, we got, we got cornbread. We better, we better get ready. We better prepare ourselves. We better prepare ourselves to be one. We're in that season, people of God. And so I love you. Uh, thank you for joining me today for the Impact Experience. Uh, I'm going to stop now. Um, if you're on this line and you... Um, you see the information on seed sowing. I'm not just telling you because I want you to give today. I'm telling you because it is a day of giving. It's Rosh Hashanah. God says he wants us to make a sacrifice today. So I'm asking you to sow your seed today. Um, check email shofar. Okay, let me see. Did you, you email me a shofar sound, Kenya? Did you email me a sound? Well, I'm not going to sound today. I, I thought about that. Well, yeah, let me check my email. I thought about that. Yeah, yeah, thank you. There's, uh, Bishop Garrett is sharing the links for the teaching. Um, we got to understand this. Uh, ah, Jesus, watch this. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Listen, listen, it's Sunday. Ah, thank you. Thank you. There you are, Kenya. Thank you so much, daughter. All right, all right. Amen. I'll close with that. Let me see if I can get it up and get it to play for me. Hallelujah. Let me get my sound right. I'm going to end with the sounding of shofar. Watch this. And it's not on Shabbat. Now, let me say this to you. Let me say this to you. The Jews did not sound shofar yesterday. They didn't sound shofar yesterday because they don't sound shofar on Shabbat. But, but, we're going to sound it today because we have liberty in Christ. Listen, we're Judeo-Christian. We believe, we believe in the liberty of the Holy Spirit. And so we sound so far to shift seasons. We sound so far to shift seasons. And so I'm going to, oh, let me see. I just think that just connected. I'm going to set this to sound so far. Hallelujah. I'm going to set this to sound so far. Hallelujah. 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 Let me open it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Kenya. Thank you. See, this is the kingdom being one. This is the kingdom being one. We get in where we fit in and we, we join together. You don't understand how many churches are on this line right now. How many of us as kingdom people are on this line right now? Listen, I love you. I love you. And I'm telling you right now, if you're on this line and you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, that, that, that listen, 
as I said from 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, he's the first fruits of them that slept. He is our only hope for the resurrected life. And I want you to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. The book of Romans says if we confess with our mouths and believe with our heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, then we can be saved. Listen, I don't want you just to be saved future tense. I want you saved now because I want you to have a keeper that will keep you through 2021. I want you to have a keeper that will keep you through 5821. Thank you, Bishop Garrett. Cosmos, Cosmos, Cosmos. Yes, Lord, you're going to hear more about Cosmos in a minute. You're going to hear more about Cosmos in a minute. You're going to hear more about Cosmos in a minute because we've got to be one. We've got to be one. Whew. Come on, guys. Listen, I want you to have that relationship with Jesus Christ. I want you to, I want you to celebrate his appearing, not dread it. But I want you to have a keeper that will keep you, that will keep you through every season. I want you to have a keeper that will keep you in the midst of your storms. Look, listen, I don't just want you to, to, to just get to heaven. I want you to live well now. I want you to experience his grace in the earthly realm. I want him to keep you through 2021 and keep you through 5081. I want you to, I want you to be able to hear the word from his mouth. I want you to be able to hear him. I want you to be able to hear him and hear the word from his mouth. Ah, Jesus. Lord, I just realized, I hope my volume was okay on the call. Listen, everyone, please stand by just for a moment. Let's hear the sounding of shofar. This is a beautiful sound, and before every move, God has to shift the move. Hallelujah. 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 God bless you. We love you. Thank you for being a part of the Impact Experience today. Thank you for being a part of... Uh, listen, <laughs> listen, I bless God for you. We love you. And we, we, we appreciate God for you. Have a great day. Keep yourselves. Listen, share this broadcast. Please share it. I promise you, I, I'm not... We're not here for fame and fortune. We're here to spread the word of God. So please share the broadcast. We love you. Thank you for all of you who are online today. Don't forget to sow your seed, a seed of any size today. Make sure you put some seed in the day. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we love you. Have a great day. All right. Thank you so much. We love you all.